We've reached the halfway mark of Ramadan and I'm yet to experience the joys of worship. Why am I like this? It's been around two weeks already since the start of Ramadan. Yet nevertheless, many of us still complain that our hearts are still out of gear, out of shape, unengaged. Yeah, sure, we're doing all of the physical stuff, but annoyingly, the heart still is not there, it's not present. What is going on? Imam Ibn Taymiyyah identifies one possible reason for this coldness. He said, إِذَا لَمْ تَجِدْ لِلْعَمَلِ حَلَاوَةً فِي قَلْبِكَ وَانْشِرَاحًا فَاتَّهِمْهُ If you fail to experience the sweetness of worship and that sense of inner expanse when worshipping Allah, then you must point the finger of blame to yourself. How come? Listen to his words. He says, فَإِنَّ الرَّبَّ تَعَالَى شَكُورٌ Because Allah is grateful. يعني أنه لا بد أن يثيب العامل على عمله في الدنيا من حلاوة يجدها في قلبه. He says meaning Allah is grateful. Meaning He will certainly reward a person in this world for his actions through peace of heart and a sense of sweetness and incredible joy. فحيث لم يجد ذلك فعمله مدخول. And since these feelings are absent, then it means that the acts acts of worship are tarnished by something. In other words, he is saying there is a barrier that is blocking our hearts from tasting the joy of worship. That barrier, in many cases, is sins. So try to pinpoint that barrier with brutal honesty. Ask yourself, is it my insincerity? Is it my self-admiration? Is it how I appear in public, both online and offline, my choice of clothes? Is it my fallout with such and such person? Is it my finances that are hampering me, my haram source of income? Is it my envy that's eating me up inside? Is it my deplorable relationship with parents? Is it my secret sinful habits? Is it my arrogant feeling that I, that I don't have many sins to be accountable for? It's somewhere there. It just needs tracking down. And that's why Wahib ibn Ward, one of our predecessors, was asked, can a person who insists upon sins experience the sweetness of worship? He said, la wa la manham. He said, no, not even a person who intends to sin. It's going to affect the joy of being a worshipper of Allah. The same way that an ill body may struggle to enjoy the goodness of food, a heart that is ill with sins will struggle to enjoy the sweetness of worship. And I know that tracing those sins is hard. Tackling them can be harder, but it's a must. And the good news is that it will only be a matter of time before your soul surrenders to your wishes. As Ibn Rajab, he said, وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ نَفْسَكَ بِمَنْزِلَةِ دَبَّتِكَ The self, the nafs, is like the animal that you mount. How come? He said, in عَرَفَتْ مِنْكَ الْجِدِّ جَدَّتْ If it sees determination in you, it will be determined. وَإِنْ عَرَفَتْ مِنْكَ الْكَسَلْ طَمِعَتْ فِيكَ وَطَلَبَتْ مِنْكَ حُضُوظَهَا But if your mount perceives laziness, it will urge you to be even more lazy and it will start demanding its rights and its appetites. That's how, that's how the nafs works. The self, it, it inclines towards sluggishness, laziness, excuses, comfort. So it needs to be kept tamed. It needs to be kept busy in a state of growth and noble pursuit, otherwise it will pull you down. And that's why Abu Zaid, he said, I continued dragging my soul by force to Allah whilst it cried. It didn't want to come until it finally surrendered and it came to me uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala smiling. And what better time to address all of this honestly than in this Ramadan of ours.